From the archives of the United States Cavalry, the true stories of Colonel Randall McKenzie and the cavalrymen he led. McKenzie's Raiders. His secret orders from the President of the United States. Clean up the Southwest. Make it a fit place for Americans to live. Wipe out the renegades, outlaws, and murderers. If necessary, cross the Rio Grande, knowing capture means hanging by the enemy. Discovery, court-martial by the United States Army. Texas country, 1873, wild and lawless. Peace had been established with some Indian tribes, but other Indians, brooding over old wrongs and goaded by evil white men, were still of the Stone Age. Barbaric savages who delighted in cruelty and wanton destruction. For two months, Colonel Randall McKenzie and his raiders had tried desperately to catch a small, vicious band of Indian killers. But the army was prohibited by law from entering any Indian reservation. Any blue coat who did so was subject to heavy fine and imprisonment. In principle, a good law, designed to keep the military out of purely civilian matters. But it crippled Mackenzie's efforts to do his job. For after each attack, the marauding Indians would vanish behind the protection of the reservation. Yes, Trooper. Some little good wagons. I rode with them. The Indians attacked at Black Canyon. Killed everyone. They took wagons, horses. Yes, sir. like that. Nice kid like Bobby. Left just enough life in him to get him here. Yes, Stanfield. That'd be their idea of a joke. To send us the news by our own dispatch rider. Shall we go after him, sir? No. No, they'll be back in the reservation by now, and Adam Beecher will enforce the law, keep us off the reservation. Organize a burial here, and we'll find the settlers. Yes, sir. As for man, his days are grass. As a flower in the field, he flourisheth. The wind passeth over the place, and it is gone. And the place thereof shall know it no more. Mount! What's on your mind, Stan, Nothing, sir. I... I was just wondering if we was ever going to be able to stop these killings. We'll stop them. Not one way, then another. We'll be out on this patrol until tomorrow afternoon. Have a man ride by Los Rios. Tell Chief White Cloud that I'd like to meet him in my office tomorrow afternoon. Yes, sir. All right. I want you to ride back and forth across that grave. I don't want a sign that it was ever there. Chief White Cloud is waiting to see you. He's in your office. Thanks. Mackenzie is honored that his friend Chief White Cloud accepted his invitation. How can it be otherwise between friends? However, Chief White Cloud, the occasion is sad. Indians tortured and killed one of my men last night and wiped out two immigrant families. The Braves were from the reservation, men of your tribe, Chief. 
You cannot be sure of that, Colonel. Where else could they come from? I tell you nothing. Whoever they were, it's no affair of mine. I'm a chief in name only. My tribesmen no longer heed my counsel. Even my own son. I no longer can talk with my own son. Why not? Who could come between a chief and his son? The matter is between us. I tell you nothing. Five bodies were all unrecognizable. The scalps had been taken from all of them. No, strike that. The scalps had been taken from all but one of them. This latest outrage brings the number of murders in this territory to 33 in the last three months, all directly traceable to the Los Rios Indian Reservation, Adam Beecher agent. Excuse me, sir. Yeah? There were 33 murders at the time of your last complaint. The total now would be 38. Yeah, you're right. Have you got in your notes there the disposition of our last complaint? I believe so, just a moment. Read it to me. Yes, sir. Refer to Department Commander September 2nd. Refer to Division Commander September 5th. Referral to War Department September 9th. War Department refers to Department of Interior September 12th. Refer to Indian Bureau September 17th. Reply from Bureau September 27th. Quote, Mr. Adam Beecher, agent of the Los Rios Reservation, advises us that he has thoroughly investigated your complaint and finds it completely unjustified. You ready to continue, sir? Yeah, I suppose so. No. No. Take a note to Adam Beecher instead. Oh, and be sure the uh, messenger is instructed not to enter the reservation. He must stop at the gates and hail someone. Yes, sir. All right. Adam Beecher, Los Rios Indian Reservation, so forth. My dear sir, before taking more drastic action, I request the honor of a meeting with you in my office at your earliest convenience. Your obedient servant, Ronald McKenzie, 4th Cavalry Commanding, and so forth. Get that off right away. Yes, sir. Brave Bear, son of Chief White Cloud, the leader of the renegade Indians. For a share of their loot, Agent Adam Beecher made the reservation a sanctuary for the criminal red men, using his high office for the lowest of purposes, graft, robbery, and murder. So it is, Paint. And who do you make war on? Some unarmed traveler? A defenseless woman and her children? Go your own way, old man, and let me go mine. There is need for talk between us, brave bear. Take the time for it while there is still time before the evil is too great to mend. I... I cannot talk now. Perhaps tomorrow, some other day. No, we have already delayed too long. If you do not talk now... Brave Bear, I'm waiting for you. Well, how'd it go? Let's take a look at what we got. Nice little ring. Too bad we can't wear any of this stuff, huh, Brave Bear? Oh, but we shouldn't kick none. So long as I can take all this stuff down to El Paso and get good money for it. I... What do you want, White Cloud? Me and your boy is pretty busy. So I see. A message for you from Colonel McKenzie. A soldier brought it to the gate. Uh, that's mighty nice of you. You shouldn't... <laughs> I don't exactly like being talked to that way, Colonel. If you've got any more complaints, you put them in a letter and send them to Washington. They'll know what to do with them. But they don't know what to do with you, do they, Mr. Beecher? Because they can't believe that anyone could be so despicable and still live. I don't have to sit here and listen to no brass button pipsqueak. Now, I'm warning you, Mr. Beecher. There better not be another one of those raids. Not another one, do you understand? Because if there is, I'll hang you for it. Oh, you will, huh? 
Now, how are you going to do it? You can't get no proof against me. I'll get proof. Depend on it. Now, please get out of here, Mr. Beecher. You make me sick. Sergeant. Yes, sir? I want rotating patrols set up. Five men in each unit. And each unit ready to ride instantly at a moment's notice. Yes, sir. If you'll permit me to say so, sir, you sure made that old skunk mad. I intended to. Get those patrols ready, Sergeant. We're going to need one very soon. Right away, sir. Thank you, sir. Ray Blair, come in here. Less than three hours after Adam Beecher had left McKenzie's office, the Indian Raiders struck again. In a heartbreaking race, the Indian Raiders had beaten the patrol to the reservation gates. Once again, Mackenzie was helpless. Looks like you fellas been riding pretty hard. You going somewhere, or you just out for the exercise? We want those Indians, Mr. Beecher. Those killers that just rode in this gate. This gate? Why, ain't no Indians come through here. I'd have seen them if they had. Why, you stinking... Quiet. You couldn't have seen them, Mr. Beecher. You weren't here at the time. Oh, that's where you're mistook, Colonel. Yes, sir, you sure are. That's a fact. Because I've been right here all afternoon. We caught them in the act of raiding a settler's home. We followed them here. I shot one of them. Oh, Injun might hurt himself any number of ways, Colonel. Ain't no way of proving you done it. It was a shoulder wound. I'm sure I could pick him up. Oh, you mean uh, if I'd let you come in here and take a look around, huh? Oh, I don't think I could do that, Colonel. It's again the law, you know. I'm a law-abiding citizen. You stupid numbskull! This is all your fault. We'd have had those Indians if you'd obeyed my orders. Well, I didn't do it. Don't you talk back to me. Take him back to the fort. Put him in the guardhouse. I'll prefer charges against him tomorrow. Please, you, you can't mean it, sir. I, I got 20 years in the service. You'll have 20 years more in prison before I get through with you. I guarantee it. Come on, let's go. Sergeant, what have you got to say for yourself? Nothing, sir. Except I'm sorry I've been so much trouble to you. Hmm. Should think you would be. You're facing some pretty serious charges. Disobedience, refusal to obey an order. Why, I could hang you for that. Do you realize it? Uh, I'm afraid I do, sir. Well, then act afraid, will you? You did a pretty good job of fooling Mr. Beecher this afternoon. Now I want you to do an even better job. You mean... Yes, sir. All right. You all set to escape from that guardhouse? Escape? <laughs> the sooner the better, sir. I don't like being in that place even on a make-believe charge. All right. You'll be out within an hour. Just as soon as I can make some necessary arrangements. Yes, sir. Now, 
The guards will let you escape. The sentry will let you slip through the gate. There'll be a horse tied outside. I want you to get on that horse and make for that Indian reservation just as fast as he can carry you. Don't stop when you get to the gate. I understand, sir. You won't be able to stop anyway because there'll be a band of troopers chasing you. Now, you're a very much wanted man. You need money to make good your escape. Beecher represents your only chance of getting any money. So, you're to peddle a story to him. But there have been so many raids on convoys in this territory lately that Mackenzie is shipping in some valuable merchandise. Three civilians will be carrying it. You think you can make him believe that? I'm sure I can, sir. Just let me try. All right, I will, Stanfield. Come here. Come here. You know where Dancing Rock is? Yes, sir. Just below it, there's a dry gulch. That's where the three civilians will be camped. It's a logical place. But I've chosen it for another reason. It's a cul-de-sac. I want those Indians alive, every one of them. And that dry gulch is the one place where I'm sure I can do it. Yes, sir. How's that for easy pickings? Ten, fifteen thousand dollars worth of first-class trade goods, and all you gotta do is grab it. It sounds good. But so did that settler's cabin you told us about. Oh, now why bring that up? You don't think I tried to get you caught? Why would I think that? Why would you want to get us caught? Oh, now, looky, brave bear. This stuff's just sitting there. All that stuff is sitting there waiting to be took. All that good merchandise. I got it straight from that runaway soldier. This soldier? With Mackenzie after him? Why did he leave here? Well, he had to. If he'd have stuck around here, Mackenzie would have got a court order out for him. He could be working with Mackenzie, laying a trap for us. What do you take me for? You think I ain't got no sense? Don't you think I'd know if it was a trap? What's the matter with you, youngster? Has your old man been riding you again? You just send him to me. And I'll straighten him out fat. You will not hurt my father. Oh, I, I didn't mean that. I mean, I'll just explain it to him, you know, like I did to you. Show him how what you're doing is helping his own people. It's the truth, Brave Bear. If you go on working like you are, these white settlers are going to have to pull up stakes and clear out. I would like to believe that. But... Well, you have to believe it. It's the only thing that makes sense. Now, what do you say? You're not going to pass up a juicy job like this, are you? I... I cannot be sure. There. Drop your weapons, all of you. Drop them, I said. Troopers! All right, bring them out. It was my father who told you. He must have. A father speak against his own son? You know better than that, brave bear. But you knew who I was. You could not see in the darkness, yet you called me by name. Perhaps I can see in the dark. Or perhaps it was a good guess. After all, who but a chief's son? No. No, you lie. Suppose a certain person felt you were getting yourself into a mess and were going to drag him in with you. He'd want you dead, wouldn't he? And suppose that he could get a message to me in such a way that I wouldn't know who he was. You tried to trick me. He... he would not... All right. All right, Brave Bear, you have it your way. If you want to hang and see all your friends hung while the man who sent you to the gallows goes free, all secure in there? All secure, Colonel. All right. Signal the men down from the cliffs. Right away, sir. Let him go. He's doing exactly what I want him to. Come on. Mackenzie's secret orders from the President of the United States. Clean up the Southwest. Do whatever you think is necessary to bring peace to the area. 
On the night of June 5th, 1873, Mackenzie obeyed his orders and broke all law and precedent. He entered the Indian reservation at Los Rios. What are you doing here? I didn't expect you for a long time yet. I know what you expected. That I would be killed. Well, what kind of talk is that? Oh, now, now wait a minute. Uh, wh what's the matter with you? Look, I I I'm your friend. Haven't I planned all your jobs for you? Haven't I covered up for you? Go on, Beecher. And when you can no longer use me, what do you do then? You sent me into a trap. I'm going to hang. But before I you do... You hang, Brave Bear. He'll hang with you. He's admitted more than enough. The gun you stole from me is empty, Brave Bear. Might as well give it to me. Your father will pass judgment on you, Brave Bear. Colonel? You all right, Mackenzie? Sure hope it didn't hurt you. Kind of lost my head for a minute. But I sure didn't mean to hurt you none. You hear that, Mackenzie? I done throwed my gun away. Me, I... I know when I'm licked. I ain't got a speck of fight left in me. I'm gonna give myself up. I, I, I'm gonna take my punishment. Say something, Mackenzie. Make a noise of some kind, so... Those I know you're all right. Drop that gun, Mr. Beecher. All right. Let's go. We've got a date with a hangman. Well, let's, let's talk this over. I got lots of money. I, I can stack enough money up, but you can't even see over it. Mr. Beecher. I, yeah, well? You've never lived like a man. It's too late to do anything about that. Let's see if you can die like one. With the passing of Adam Beecher, the Indians of Los Rios Reservation lived in peace with the white man. But the wild, lawless area continued to exist. Against it, one dedicated man, Colonel Ranald McKenzie. Oh, Sergeant, you know, when that detail rode in from Dancing Rock last night, they were a pretty slack-looking outfit. Dusty gear, sloppy uniforms, unsoldierly bearing. Some of them were even smiling. I want them sharpened up, you understand? Yes, sir. I'll see they smarten up. You do that. And just to make sure they remember, give them two hours of close order drill. Yes, sir. Oh, and Sergeant. Yes, sir. When they finish that drill. Yes, sir. Give them the rest of the week off.
Kinsey's Raiders did ride again and again, carrying out the secret orders of the President of the United States. Do whatever necessary to clean up the Southwest. Make it a decent place for people to live. Ride with Mackenzie's Raiders as they relive the blazing pages of history in the making.